So I have an idea. I am going to surprise my husband with a bathroom makeover. I haven't done much planning. <laughs> he is traveling for three weeks. So I said like, if any time, now's the time. If you're watching this, it means that I relatively like the results. So we'll see how it goes. First, I will show you a before. Don't mind the mess. It is extra messy, but this is what we're doing. That was actually the bath mess I just picked up at Home Depot yesterday, last night. So on the walls, they have a color called Thin Ice. This is the builders, countertops, cupboards, and floor. This is where we keep our laundry. This is his sink over here. It's the shower. Again, it's really dirty. I'm gonna be cleaning it. It's time to clean it anyways. And then I'm like, hey, I saw some YouTube videos about this. Let me give it a try. Again, I'm sorry for the garbage. This is the bathtub. Nice windows. Again, just pretend that isn't there. But vanity. And then this is my side. That's my closet. The door is closed for a reason. And then this is the toilet. So we are going to be, oh, I even need a new vent cover. plan is to paint on a, mar a black marble countertop on all three counters. We're gonna paint the cupboards white, put on black hardware, handles, and we're gonna paint the floors white. The floors, the bathtub, which way? The backsplash, and even the shower. So we've been wanting to renovate our bathroom for a very long time, and money was the biggest thing stopping us, but also, we don't know if this is our forever home. So we always been like, oh, should we spend the money to invest in it now? Or should we just save that money and put it towards the next house? So I found a couple, I don't know, cheats to get that luxury feel, but without that luxury price. So stay tuned and let me know what you guys think. At Canadian Tire, looking for supplies. One good tip I did see is instead of scrubbing the floor by hand the whole thing, I saw someone use a drill brush. So I'm trying to find one for about 10 bucks. See if that works. First, I did end up purchasing the matte top coat, but after seeing the cupboards and those were flat, I decided to return it and get the semi-gloss instead, which worked out so much better. Here, I was trying to decide between the two colors, but ultimately went with the steam gray. So this is the stuff I'm gonna be using for the floors and painting. I made a stop at Ikea, got some fun stuff.
to use the painter's brush and cut all of the edges. I also decided to cut in between where the grouting was. That way when I did use the roller, it was a lot quicker to just roll over everything than having to try and press into all of the grout. going in with the roller you want to make sure you have a generous amount of paint this will help to ensure that you only do need one coat coverage as the product does say however I like to be extra sure and I ended up doing two coats Also, learn from my mistakes. Remove the caulking before you start painting, and then when you're done painting and everything has dried, then you can reapply brand new caulking. So here's the look after one coat. Like I said before, make sure there's a generous amount of paint on your brush when you're rolling. I did not put enough paint on my brush, which is why it looks like this, so I did end up going over with a second coat. So again, I started cutting all the edges first, cutting all the grouting, and then going over with the rolling pin and worked my way out um, to the door. Pictures, those little old pictures I'm getting rid of. New bed sheets, old mirrors, organizations, some handles, laundry. That's the new shower head that I'm really excited about. I got a storage unit from Ikea and I got these amazing LED mirror lights that I'm so excited to use. We got some floor paint there, some cabinet paint there, some garbage. That's Roxy. Hi, Roxy. Hi. Hi, girl. Come here. And then into the bathroom, I started to take out the shower then, but I'm having a big problem. I got that one out, no problem. I got that one out, no problem. But this one is causing me just a headache because the hex screw underneath it is worn out and I can't get it. And then we used to have a shelf here and there's a bunch of just guck there that I'm still trying to get off and clean properly before I paint. Not a screwdriver, but a tool that was kind of like it looks like a stop sign, kind of, but maybe an extra side or two. So I was driving a bunch of tools that are shaped this way. But no, the key was this one that looks like a star, kind of. Anyways, thank God that that is done. So now we are going to no, open these. We're going to take off Let's just come off. Oops, oops. 
be that easy. So this is after the second coat of paint. It's starting to look much better. I think I'm gonna have to go um, just probably three coats just in these problem areas here. Good morning. So today we are on day three. Everything is looking pretty well. We painted the shower. I'm gonna have to do figure some things out. So we put, it's been what, like, I don't know, eight, nine hours. Um, so these parts are dry. Bit of concern here. This I already knew about. Here, I don't know if you can see it, but it didn't take too well. So I don't know if my mom just didn't clean this section properly, but I did notice the ceiling. You can see my fingerprints. <laughs> the ceiling is still wet. So I don't know if I'm not getting enough airflow in here while it's drying. But yeah, the corners. I guess I'm supposed to take off the silicone. Um, so I wasn't too concerned when my mom was painting because we'll just put it over. But this gap is pretty big, so I'm gonna have to figure. So what they taught me on YouTube is when you want to save your paintbrushes for the next day, put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the fridge. And that will help to keep them moist to be able to use them the next day. And then I put foil on the paint trays. Pro tip. Although the floors do look lovely, at this point I was panicking that it was just too much white. So I ended up going to Michael's. I got this stencil pack, it came with seven, but I just ended up using one to add in some color to the floors. So I didn't want to put the stencil on every single tile because one, that's just way too much work for me at this point, and two, I didn't want to now go extreme and make it overboard, so I decided to do every other tile. So 
So first I did all the full tiles. Yep, you can see my mistake there. So at first I did all of the full tiles. Oh, pro tip, make sure you're wearing socks. Bef after you've painted the floors, but before you've put on the top coat, the floors will still have a bit of stickiness. So make sure you wear socks. I did wear black socks at first and then was getting fluff on the floor. So make sure you wear white socks. Back to what I was saying. So first I did all of the tiles that needed the full stencil and then because I only had one stencil I started to trim it a little bit at a time to get any of the half tiles, any of the quarter tiles and so on. And because I did every other tile, once everything was done it was very easy for me to walk through on all the white tiles and just quickly use the floor paint again and touch up any mistakes that I had gone over to the white. So this is what ended up happening to my wall and my shower. I have my amazing Uncle Winston who came by to help me out with this part. I got a blackhead rainfall faucet shower set off of Facebook. It's normally $700 but I got it for $165. But what I didn't know was that it had this complicated piece that had, it had to go in. So my uncle came through, took care of that got everything connected, connected the piping, the water back, and then filled in the hole. And now you can't even tell that there was a gigantic hole in our bedroom. <clears throat> so we got our flathead faucet there, our handle, shower handle, and our rain shower. Which is amazing. 